wanna sleep in Cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do Hey, this is Zach Pascarello. Good, how are you? Now still a good time to talk? Yeah, man. Whatever you have, whatever questions you have, I'm happy to help. Are you, are you gonna drive or are you gonna hire a driver? CDL or non-CDL? Okay, so you got your CDL, but you're gonna basically just drive a box truck. Are you hoping to grow this business? Do you wanna eventually like, get more trucks and hire drivers? What kind of truck are you getting? That's smart, yeah. Yeah, with a CDL, you'll be able to haul you know, 30, 40,000 pounds, so that's smart. So the market is crazy right now. You're gonna pay way more for a box truck today than you would have a year ago. There's just no way around that. But the one thing I will say, try to buy as good of a truck as you possibly can. New, few miles, expensive, whatever it has to be, because just think of this as an investment. Like whenever I, whenever I was getting started last year, I had the idea, you know, just buy as cheap of a truck as possible. And so I ended up buying like a 2010, box truck and it was fine, but I had some maintenance issues and it just won't last as long. So if you plan on doing this, you know, for three to five years, you're gonna wanna get a truck that's relatively new with relatively low miles. So just, and you said you already have enough money saved up, um, just get as good of a truck as you possibly can. And then don't pay, don't use all your cash to buy the truck. Like try to save as much cash as you possibly can. So, so our, if you haven't already, start looking at financing options, start getting connected with local banks and local credit unions and start looking to see how you can finance this truck because you want to save your cash. Yeah, and you, no matter what, you're probably gonna have to put 20% down. So if you're looking at a truck that's $80,000, chances are you're gonna have to spend $16,000 on a down payment. So just be prepared for that. And then you already know insurance, you know, three to $5,000 for the down payment. What people often overlook is in that first month, you never know what's gonna happen. So just be prepared. Like I bought a tractor in, in February and I had to replace the clutch in March. And I spent $5,000 right there replacing the clutch. So you just never know, buying a used truck, I mean, you could have a mechanic look over it 10 times and you, you just never know what's gonna happen. So just be prepared to spend $5,000 on maintenance in the first two months. Hopefully you don't, but just be prepared to do it. The warranties are hit or miss. Sometimes the warranties make it so difficult. You have to jump through so many hoops and they only cover certain things. Like these warranty companies, like they make money off of the warranties, obviously. So if they're making money, that means you're losing money. I don't know, me personally, I'm pro, I don't know. It's, I'm so conflicted on it. Should you do it, should you not do it? Just, it all depends on what kind of warranty you get and what's covered. Cause there's a bunch of different types of warranties out there. So if you can get a good one that covers a lot of the major engine repairs and like, if you have to get your, your DEF system replaced, like that's gonna be a $10,000 repair. So if you can get something that, that covers something like that, it might be worth it, but it but the ones the ones that come from Ryder and Penske might not be the best. Maybe look for like a third party warranty and and see if you can just shop around. You know, just com compare the different rates and just make sure you read the fine print and like see everything that they cover because not every warranty is going to cover the same repairs. I think you should try to dispatch your truck on your own. All you need to do is get a subscription to the DAT load board and you'll be able to find loads yourself. You'll be able to, it's gonna be hard in the first 30 days. I always say this, it's gonna be hard in the first 30 days. You're gonna, dispatching is not hard. It just takes a lot of time. So like I'm, I'm a bookkeeper, I'm an accountant, like doing bookkeeping is not difficult. It just takes time. And so people outsource things like bookkeeping and dispatching because they quite simply just don't have enough time to do it. But you're gonna learn so much about the industry if you dispatch for yourself. So just be prepared to spend two to four hours every day dispatching your truck, but all you need is a laptop and a DAT subscription. You could probably even do it from like an iPad, but I just always recommend just go to Amazon, you can spend like 300 bucks, get a laptop, and get a subscription to DAT load board. It costs like 35 bucks a month and that's all you need to dispatch your truck on your own. Yeah, yeah, all the loads are posted straight to the DAT load board, and then as you start working with specific brokers, just make sure you write down their name and their phone number and their email address, and then in the future, you can just reach out directly to the broker to see what kind of loads they have. That's that's how you're gonna find the best loads. Build the relationship with the brokers and get your, the loads from the brokers first, because brokers, they send out all the best loads to all the carriers who they've worked with before. And then whatever they can't find coverage for, that's what they put up on the DAT load board. So the DAT load board is nothing but the leftover scraps that no one wants, but you're just getting started. You don't have any of those connections yet. So unfortunately you have to rely on the DAT load board, but hopefully after 30 to 60 days, you've built up your book of business, you've built relationships with brokers, and you can just go straight to the brokers 
for for lows. And then also keep in mind places like JB Hunt and CH Robinson and XPO, like they have their own load boards, like organic to their website. So you can for both box trucks and semis. So you can just so you know you can just go straight to them. They're probably going to have better loads up on their actual load board. But just getting started, and th and those load boards are typically always free. Um, but just getting started, you're going to have to go to the DAT load board. You're probably going to run a lot of loads with with total quality logistics. You're probably going to run you know just loads with various brokers. And then the other thing is make sure you always run a credit check on the brokers. Like Hurricane Logistics was really bad in 2021. They had a, a bunch of loads that um, were not factorable with factoring companies. So just always double check their credit with your factoring company to make sure that they have enough credit so that your factoring company will pay you in advance. Just don't mess around with brokers that don't have enough credit. Who, who are you gonna, who's factoring your loads? Do you have a factoring company? Yeah, RTS is pretty good, OTR is pretty good. A lot of the factoring companies are the same. Something that I do recommend you do is go to the Better Business Bureau, the like BBB.org, and look into the factoring company before you sign on with them. Because there are some factoring companies that have really bad reviews with the Better Business Bureau. Yeah, I think it's BBB.org, the Better Business Bureau. Um, I always recommend RTS. They're pretty well known and yeah, they're pretty well known in the industry. And after this phone call, I'll send you an email with my point of contact over at RTS and she'll be able to help you out. Yeah, they charge 3%. Pretty much every that's what pretty much everybody charges from what I've seen, 3%. Yeah, for sure. You'll be able to put, whenever you register the truck, you'll be able to put the name of that truck in your business. But that's not necessarily going to build like your business credit just getting that loan for your truck. The, the fastest way and the easiest way is just to get fuel cards. They're going to be like net seven fuel cards and you can get those through your business name. And also you can get credit cards like through Capital One, Chase, American Express. Those fuel cards and those credit cards, those are probably going to report to the major credit bureaus. And that's how you'll be able to build your business credit. Yeah, most of the fuel cards like Fuel Man, they're net seven. Uh, some are net 30, but most are net seven. But also... I don't know what your situation is or why you're trying to build business credit, but I wouldn't be too hyper-focused on business credit because I haven't found it to be too terribly useful. I guess I, I guess a good question for you is like, what are you hoping to get out of your business credit? Like, what are you trying to do with it? Yeah, so in my experience, and you know, once again, this is just my experience, um, could be right, could be wrong, but from what I've seen, business credit isn't as important. Like your, your loan officer at your bank probably isn't going to rely strictly on your Dun & Bradstreet number. What's what's way more important is first of all, having a successful business. Like, like you need to have money in your business checking account and you need to have a strong tax return. So if you're able to show your loan officer, hey, last year I had quarter million dollars in revenue, I had net income of $100,000, like this business is extremely successful. That, that in and of itself is going to be way more important than any than any business credit report. So number one, have a successful business. And that's only going to happen after time. Like in the first two months, you're not gonna be super successful, but you know, hopefully after the first year, you've got some revenue, you've got some net income, and you got some money in the bank. That's really important. Um, the second thing that's most important is just build a really solid relationship with a loan officer. So it's probably, the loan officer is probably gonna come from the local bank or the local credit union where you have your business checking account and just build a relationship with that person. And then that person is going to be your liaison to the credit department at the bank and he's going to basically get you the loan and get you the funding that you need for your business. Like you're not gonna, no Dun & Bradstreet number is gonna do it for you. Your, your business tax returns, your business checking account, and that local loan officer. Those are the three things you need to get to get funding for your business. There is no shortcut to, there is no shortcut to do it though. You gotta just put in the time and make the money. Yeah, so the best way to do it, honestly, just slow and steady. Just stay organized from the beginning. Do things the right way. Like don't don't take any shortcuts because you're gonna have your DOT safety audit in the first year. So like you want to make sure you're doing things in accordance. You know, first and foremost, safely and in accordance with the regulations. Like that's gonna be your fastest way to going out of business if you fail a safety audit or you know get put out of service for whatever reason. So right from the beginning, stay organized. Do things the right way, and then just implement systems. So what am I what I mean by that is, you know, have a system for your bookkeeping, have a system for your dispatching, have a system for your maintenance, do regular recurring maintenance on your truck. Don't don't push that oil change to 15,000 miles just to save a couple extra bucks. Um, you know, don't be afraid to spend money on a good mechanic and good maintenance and take care of your truck and really just just be prepared to put in the work. 
like I said, you're gonna dispatch your truck for two to four hours every day. You're gonna drive for 11 hours every day. So you're about to put in 60 hours of work every single week for the next year. But if you do that and if you drive your own truck, you can easily make 1500 bucks a week, if not 2000, 2500 bucks a week. Like you're, if you, if you actually drive, you know, 3000 miles a week, and if you actually dispatch your truck, like you are, you're, you're set to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next 12 months easily. And then, and then, so all you got to do, so you've got, you've got a system in place to make the money and then you got to save the money. So it doesn't matter how much money you make. What really matters is how much money you spend. So for the next year, like if you're, if you're, if you're serious about getting another truck and building your business, you got to work 60 hours a week, drive 3000 miles a week, make all the money and then save it. So like you should really just like go into focus grind mode for the next 12 months and just save as much money as you possibly can. That way you can get a second truck, hopefully in six months. And then, you know, your business will just grow itself after that. Yeah. And to make sure you have money coming in and to make sure that you're not spending too much money, you have to understand the numbers of your business. So I'm I'm always talking about cost per mile. You need to know how much money it costs to run your business. Brokers and dispatchers will tell you all day, like, oh, I got you this load, you know, paying a thousand bucks, going to Michigan or going to Atlanta, whatever. But none of that matters. The only thing that matters is your cost per mile and then the rate per mile. So I don't care. I don't care if a load's paying ten thousand dollars. All I care about is how much I'm getting paid per mile and how much it costs me to run my truck per mile. And you need to know those two numbers. And those two numbers are constantly changing because diesel's constantly going up and down. Tolls are changing depending on what state you're in. Repairs and maintenance you know, fluctuates depending on how old your truck is. And the freight market constantly fluctuates. I don't know if you've been paying attention the past three months, but it's crazy what's going on. Like we're definitely going into somewhat of a freight recession and it's, it's tough, but as long as you're running the numbers, as long as you know how much money you need to make per mile, you'll be successful. And so the big thing with that cost per mile, it's, it's a very simple equation. It's literally cost divided by miles. So you just add up all of your cost. And I typically do it on like a weekly basis to figure out how much it costs to run your business for an entire week. So if your truck, you know, costs a thousand bucks a month, divide that by four, your ins- your monthly insurance pay- di- payment, divide that by four, all your maintenance, all your tolls, all your diesel, just get your, get whatever you're spending per week and then divide that by how many miles you're driving per week. And then that is literally your cost per mile. So if it costs you $2 per mile to run your truck, then you know when you're negotiating with brokers or working with dispatchers, you know, hey, I need at least $2.25 per mile to be profitable. But it's up to you to figure out those numbers and to know those numbers when you go into your negotiations and, and conversations with brokers and dispatchers. And, and that's the conversation I have with a lot of guys when they're talking about renting a truck versus buying a truck. Like a lot of guys are looking at renting a truck for a thousand bucks a week and then they think they're gonna drive a thousand miles and then we do the cost per mile analysis and then all of a sudden they're losing money. So figure out you know, how, how much your truck's gonna cost, how much insurance is gonna cost and then just, just look at the numbers. Everything is driven by the data and by the numbers. Yeah, if you're looking for a good truck, you know, truckpaper.com, commercialtrucktrader.com and then also don't forget about your local dealerships. Like go to Google Maps and just type in, you know, commercial vehicles, commercial trucks and find local dealerships and see what they have. That's where I got I got both of my trucks from my hometown. Yeah, I feel like nowadays a lot of people forget to even check out the local dealerships. They just go straight straight for Google. What's your question? So the freight market is a lot like the stock market. It goes up and down depending on our country's economy, supply and demand, what's going on internationally with China and other big countries. So, you know, just like our stock market has a recession, you know, it goes up and down the housing market, you know, the prices of houses goes up and down. So too, does that happen with the freight market? So it all depends on how manufacturers and suppliers and shippers, it all depends on how they're, they're deciding to move the freight. So a lot of people are switching to the rail intermodal stuff on the railroad tracks. So a lot of people are going away from trucks because it was so expensive in 2021. But whenever I say freight recession, I just mean that we are getting paid less to run freight. So before I would get paid 3000 bucks to drive something a thousand miles. Now I might only be getting 2,500 bucks. So the, the, the rate per mile went from three bucks to 250 and, and that'll just go up and down. So whenever I say freight recession, I just mean like, you know, for the past two months and maybe for the next two or three months, I don't know how long it's going to last, but we're getting paid less to run freight because for whatever reason, there's just less freight options out there. But, but that's going to happen in, in any industry, you know, in, in any business, you're going to have good times. You're going to have bad times. You just got to prepare. So whenever you have really good months, you might make 
fifteen thousand dollars next month, but you know, just don't go spending that whole fifteen thousand. Just prepare because next month you might you might only make five thousand. So you just gotta you know hope for the best and plan for the worst. Is this a good time to jump into it? The the answer. It's impossible to know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And I always say this, this is like kind of my quote, um, the best day to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best day to plant a tree is today. So yeah, sure, it would have been good to start your trucking business two years ago, but I would never recommend that you wait for the market to go back up because no one can predict when the market's gonna go back up. So in the past 100 years, yeah, in the past 100 years, our country has been successful. So I can only imagine for the next hundred years, you know, I can only hope that we're going to be successful. Um, but it's impossible to know. You know, the freight market might completely crash. Our country might completely crash tomorrow. No one really knows. But I would never let that stop you from starting a business today. Worst case scenario, you try it for a year and it doesn't work out, and you move on. But I would not wait a year. I wouldn't wait six months. I would get started today if I were you.